Hey YouTube, in this video I'm gonna walk you through how I add JSON support to a REST API when I'm developing one in Apache Camel. So, here we go. So here we go, I'm in my developer zone uh, and I've defined myself a little REST API here. Um, I'm gonna use the server component and I'm creating a REST API um, because I really love sports. So I'm gonna create a REST API called Go Sports, uh, and it's got one get operation and it's got one post uh, operation post method. Um, in the get, it's going to just return this nice little message when I hit it. And in the post, it's also gonna do the same. It's just gonna say thanks. <laughs> What I'm using instead of using Insomnia, which is a pretty cool tool for REST API testing, and you just give it um, a URL to hit and what kind of request you want, and away you go. So I'm going to do localhost 8080 because my service is going to start on 8080. So localhost 8080 slash services slash, and it's go sports. So if I send a get request, as you can see, I actually have got my response here. I'm your resource for all the sports. So by default, this is just returning me something in plain text. Um, and if you see what's happening here, I'm, I'm just showing, if I just show the raw data, I mean, there's nothing here. There's no JSON, there's no XML, it's just a string. And in fact, Camel's not even giving any kind of content type. It's not returning a content type XML, text plain, nothing. It's just, just doing a really basic, here you go, here's some data. Yeah. The starting point for to effectively like switch on Camel's JSON support uh, is by adding a binding mode. Now, a binding mode is basically going to take that uh, input coming into Camel or the output going back out of Camel, and it's going to try and marshal it or unmarshal it into JSON format. So it's going to try and convert it. So I add it by in the REST configuration at the top, I add binding mode and I'm going to say REST binding mode auto. What that's going to do is that's going to tell Camel that when it receives a request coming in, it should try and convert from JSON if it's JSON or XML if it's XML. That's what the auto means. It's going to try and convert it into an appropriate Java object. Um, and the same goes for anything that's then returned back out to the consumer as well. So if I then restart my app and I test again, now I test, I'm just, this is just going to fire up here. Okay, spring, da, 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 da. okay, yeah, it started. Okay, looking good. Okay, so then if I send another request again, so this time Camel's now surrounded it with uh, quotes and it's also said, hey, I'm sending you some JSON, which is kind of slowly getting, <coughs> excuse me, to where we want to be, kind of. Let's say if I wanted to create a new sport, which is what I want to do in this post endpoint, what does a sport have? Well, it's probably going to have um, a name. How many team members? Also, where's it played? Well, let's say, um, uh, let's say venue. Sports ball is played in a garden. I don't think it is, but there we go. This is going to be my uh, input payload to the, to the, to the post service, so to the post operation on the REST API. So what happens now if I post, if I send this? So let's see. If I, uh, I've not made any modifications to the service. If I, if I hit send... So I'm still getting thanks sport coming out. But the one thing I wanted to show you is I've, I've got a log statement in here. So this thing is basically gonna say, uh, log out the current contents of the payload and show me more stuff about it. Now, if I scroll along to the log output and let me maybe turn on word wrap, that's probably gonna be easier to see, isn't it? Ooh, word wrap is, I always forget where it is. Use soft wraps, here we go. So along with this smudge of text, you can probably see my logger, this is my logging statement. What I want to do is show you actually, when I send this payload, what does Camel think it's received? Now actually, Camel thinks it has received, or is in the, in the body, is a linked hash map. And that is because Camel has taken 
my JSON payload and it said, oh, okay, you've got three keys here. You've got name, team members, and venue. I think it looks like a hash map, so I'm gonna unmarshal this into a hash map for you. And we can do something cool, like because this is now a hash map, because it's gonna create me a hash map, I can now reference objects in the hash map using uh, this notation. So I can say body uh, name. And I can, I can say, thanks for submitting a new sport body name. Okay, so let's restart that. And hopefully this should be coming out in my uh, uh, web service output. Okay. Okay, cool. So in the response, we're now saying, we're now using a value from the input, right? Because Camel has unmarshaled that into a hash map and we can reference entries in the hash map using um, their sort of, um, using the square bracket syntax like this. Okay, this is, this is all well and good for basic use cases, but if you're wanting to do something um, a bit more complicated or you're wanting to, or you actually have a Java object, you can unmarshal to that Java object, so to a POJO, to a plain old Java object. For the sake of an example, I want to create a POJO that represents a sport. Okay, so then what I can do is I can just create a simple uh, sport class. Okay, so that sport is going to have private string name, private string team. Oh, let's see, it's going to be an int team members because that's actually a number. And private, oh dear, it's private string garden. Okay, now I've defined my fields. What I need to do then uh, on top of that is uh, generate some getters and setters. And in IntelliJ, I can do that automatically by just doing that, which is lush. Now, what I can do is if I want Camel, when it receives that payload, to populate a sport object, uh, so an object of, the, of that class, then all I need to do is tell it, tell Camel to do that unmarshalling by giving it a hint of which, of, of the class that I want to unmarshal as. So that would be type sport.class. Okay, so now I expect that when I hit here, my, um, my body should actually be uh, of type sport. So let's run that. And it will take in name and it will populate name in the POJO. It will take team members and populate team members in the POJO and venue and so on and so on and so on. So now if I run my request again. Ah, okay. Uh, venue. Unrecognized people menu. Ooh, did I spell that right? Oh, garden. Yeah, that's why. That's wrong. <laughs> so, read a venue. Okay, so venue. Yes. Update the guests and setters. Yeah. My brain was in the wrong place. Okay, so let's rerun that. So bear in mind the names need to match. So the name in your input JSON needs to match the field in the in the POJO. So then if I post again, cool. Okay. Okay, cool. So we've got a bug. So the reason why this is failing is because my expression that I have here is still um, in the format of um, a simple expression that references a hash map rather than something that references a POJO with um, a, a, a get, you know, get name, get team members, get venue type thing. And all we need to do if we're referencing, if we're using, if, if the object that's in the exchange is a POJO, we just need to change that to a dot. So it's body dot name, body dot team members. But I want to just show you that the thing that I really want to show which will illustrate the change is that now that I have told Camel that the incoming request is of type sport, um, the body is now my sport object. So it's already unmarshaled it to my POJO, to my Java object. It's just the finishing touches I need to change here. So if I relaunch that, and this should hopefully fix my issue, then uh, we do post send that request again. Cool. So thanks for spitting a new sport. And as you can see, the body at the time when I made that log is a, is a type sport. So now I can do a whole bunch of stuff that I'd be able to do if I was just working with a standard Java object on the body. How does this work in terms of response? Well, response is, is, is similar, output type. So let's say I want to create a new class for my uh, output response type. So 
Uh, let's see, uh, new class, sport response. Okay, yeah. And my sport response class is just gonna, it's just gonna have um, a message. Okay. Bedroom setter. Okay, so it's just gonna be one Java object with one field message. And I'm gonna populate that message. So let's see, I'm gonna do, uh, So now I can do process, new processor. And inside here, I can do anything I like with the body. So I can say exchange. I can say first, let's get the current contents of the body. And that is going to be a sport. Get message dot get body as sport dot class. So this should expect that it's going to be a sport. Then I'm going to create my, my response objects so of sport res response. Response equals new sport response. I'm going to say response dot set message equals thanks for submitting. And it's going to be sport dot get. So I'm going to return a message which is basically saying thank you for submitting this sport name. And then all I, all I need to do is just stuff that uh, sport response inside the body. Sport. Cool. Get rid of that one. So what I've got is um, I'm still going to receive the data at my post endpoint. I'm going to put the data through a custom camel processor. And I'm writing this using this inline syntax here. Then uh, I'm going to take the sport that was received or that was sent in the in the request by the client. I'm going to build up a I'm going to create an empty response object populate the message inside it with something from the input and then put that in the body and then Camel will return that to the client. So let's restart that and see what happens. Okay, so then if I just do another send. Cool. So now you'll see what Camel has done is it's properly given me some an actual JSON object here. So because in my sport response object, I have one field called message, it's created a field called message here and given it a string value. If I format that as nice uh, JSON, you'll see actually we have some JSON coming back. The header, um, as I should have shown you before, is still an application content type, is still application JSON. So this is good to go and a client can now consume this service knowing it's going to return uh, a valid JSON and we can uh, carry on developing. I can carry on developing my amazing sports service and maybe in here I might want to do something like uh, uh, read a record from a database or insert a record into a database here. So insert record into a database goes here. Something like that. So as you can see, that's how you can use um, binding uh, on REST APIs to marshal between JSON and POJOs without having to write a single piece of JSON. Okay, apart from that piece that I wrote in the testing, but that's it.